So you know what's happening here is that we've disrupted and disrupted and disrupted on the river's edge for the last 10 years. The first year I came in here with over 2,000 snares that we removed along this particular section. And now the river is quite high, so we would expect to see less on there, but more inland. But funny enough, where we've just picked up these last two snares, this is the first time I've ever seen snares here. And that to me shows our success. We've disrupted enough for these guys to say, we're getting hammered the whole time, let's move it elsewhere. And so their modus operandi has actually changed and it's going inside a little bit more. So I think today our usual distance from each other is about 20 meters. Maybe we need to make about 40. Could also indicate that the number of guys involved now in the snaring are more and their little areas have been under pressure. So these new guys coming in, having to find new areas and not poaching on the other poachers. Uh, turf spots. So Well, that's a good point that you make. I mean, just like us in hunting areas or photographic areas where we've got concessions, and we, we pay for those concessions, so too do the poachers. They've got their little patch that they more often than not use. And each snare that they've got their own little signature on there so that I know what animals I've caught. That's basically how it works. So what determines a poacher? A poacher is someone who's on a piece of ground that is not legally authorized to be there. I.e. he doesn't hold a permit. So hunters on areas, we, whilst they might uh, harvest wildlife, they're doing that under permit and under permission. These guys are here without permit, without permission, and they're harvesting in ways that are unsustainable. And in Zimbabwe, we've got the Trapping of Animals Act that defines what weapons we can use to either hunt with or catch with. These snares we're removing actually fall under a class one trap, highly legal. Not even a special permit uh, would be issued to use these traps or this methodology. And also brutal as well. I mean, these things die a terrible death. Eh? Choking. Some of them, you can see the scratch marks where they've taken hours to die and it, it must be a terrible death. It's awful. And you see the branches where that snare is rubbed up and down and they're smashing on you know, the branches and, and trees in some cases. It's hectic. We found quite a lot of activity here. Let's just get out just beyond probably another uh, 50 meters, 100 meters and then we'll zigzag back in and out. And I think that's the best way that we can cover this area. There's not many of us. I wish there was 20, but there's only five of us. And so we have to zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. This is a very, very time consuming thing. And as you can see, we started this morning at 8 and you know, it's going on about 10.30 now and we haven't covered that much distance. So it's just imperative that we get more boots on the ground here. Uh, yeah, you see that very, very low stance. We've got something that's going to that's gonna catch these river iron animals like bushbuck, uh, perhaps even a little diker darting through here will get caught on this. Interestingly enough, this is the third or fourth different style of snare that we found. This is actually hoist cable, uh, or maybe even a handbrake cable. Uh, a lot of the, the garages uh, will be replacing broken handbrakes, and the staff take the handbrake cable and they sell that back to the villagers, and the villagers are then using the handbrake cable. So this might have come off a, a, heavy, a heavy truck that's uh, running coal or something like that, maybe even timber. Um, and they, they take off those handbrake cables and they use those. It's a very, very good, uh, strong um, product that just doesn't disintegrate. So look at that, eh? And in fact, I think in here there's like almost two of these things. So those people who don't understand how a snare works, you'll harness one end onto a log or onto a tree and then you've got a noose. Basically, we've all seen the cowboy movies of nooses and what happens is the animal puts its head or its foot through there and as it moves, this noose gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter around that foot and eventually it's caught and an animal can't get out of that. It's not like us with our thumb that we can actually remove that. So that's what's happening. And this wire, once set, it never goes away until somebody removes it or an animal gets caught in it. It doesn't disintegrate. Uh, whereas in days of old, we used to use fiber snares and those used to rot and decay. Today with steel, we don't have, these snares never, never, never go. So when this is set, it's set for life. So this is a, a snare that's been sprung. Obviously impala, bushbuck or something small. You can see it was obviously tied in position. It's been hit and not didn't wasn't effective in grabbing the animal by the neck. You can see this branch here was obviously the barricade to create it or push it rather to 
into the gap like that. So this one has been lying at probably not so fresh this one. It's, it's looking a bit dry now, so a couple of weeks old I guess. <laughs>